we're about to take a look at the top seven utility knives. We're gonna test them out in a couple different ways, but these aren't just any utility knives. These are seven of the most recognized utility knives that I've either seen a lot of other people use or that have been recommended to me. Now you guys are gonna wanna stick around to the end because I've actually already done the test at this point. I'm filming this intro after, and I was really, really surprised with two utility knives, one of which has been getting a lot of love recently, and now I'm very confused about why. I believe that people are fanboying over it. However, it's absolute garbage. I am not a fan at all. The seven utility knives are going to be in this order for all of the tests. We're gonna start with the cheapest and move up to the most expensive, and we have some expensive ones on the list to see just how they compare to the regular ones. On the scales that we're gonna do that are less subjective, that aren't just a pure measurement, we're gonna do it on a scale of one, two, or three. If you get a one, that means it's perfect. You couldn't ask for any more. Two is acceptable, it's average, it's okay. It's not something that I would be upset with. Three means that it is in the negative, okay? And so at the end of this, we'll add up these less subjective scores, which are very, very important scores, and we'll average them as well to see which knife stands out the most. And we'll see how that number actually compares to the picks that I have for the EDC, the workhorse, and overall knife. For the blade change, this is pretty obvious. It's a self-explanatory. We're gonna see how the blades change. If there are any issues, obviously they're all going to be easy the whole premise of this is to use the best knives that are out there not some janky junky knives first up we have the milwaukee this one here is the fastback it's the new compact if we're going to go ahead and put blades in there it does come with a few uh, we're not going to use the the proprietary blades we're actually going to use for all of our blades we're going to use these carbide tipped from tough built these are some sick blades if you guys are looking for new blades we're going to go ahead and open it as you guys can see to get a new blade out you just pull this pull the blade out shut it and it loads a new blade in it is not super great uh so we got it in there it's not terrible it's just this button here not something that i would consider difficult at all there is a little bit of play in there but it's in there and it's secure next up on the list is the tough built we're going to change it out so button press blade comes out so we'll insert the blade here this is going to get a one for sure so in order to change out this blade it's right up here we'll press this it pops out so we'll get a new blade out go ahead and push this in and it locks in there. There is a little bit of play, probably not as much as the Milwaukee, but still quite a bit more than the Tough Built. Next up on the list is this Cobalt. This one was actually recommended to me by a viewer. They said that they love this, absolutely love this Cobalt. To pull it out, same thing. There is a little bit of a guard here. Now there is some play in there with that blade. Um, but as far as to get it out, it's pretty easy. I'm gonna go ahead and give this one a one. This one's got a lot different blade change than the other styles so far. So if we look here to pull it out, you just push this little metal piece down, pop it up, and then it comes out. So we'll go ahead and get a new blade. And the reason why we are changing all these blades is so that they're the same. So when we weigh them, because obviously you're never gonna carry it without a blade in there, all the blades will be the same. So it's in there. Now, as far as play goes, there is a small amount of play. Now onto our Klein. In order to change blades, it looks like the exact same as the Milwaukee. There's a lot of blade play there. So we'll press that down, pop it out. You do have to press the button down in order to get the blade in there. Like I said, quite a bit of play. That leads us to our final one. It comes in some significantly nicer packaging because the price tag is significantly larger. This one is definitely the different, the most different out of all of them. You have to push this over uh, and actually it locks on. It's not super easy to do, uh, especially not when you're trying to get it on camera. So it helps if you push the blade away from the side that you're pushing away. So this is the other blade. Yeah, putting them in is definitely significantly easier. You just have to push that piece over and slide that blade in. 
I'm sure it gets easier with time actually knowing how to do it. Uh, that is, I, I looked at it right before this just to see to make sure I didn't need a tool. And that's what I found. So when we look at this, this is one of the, gonna be one of the tighter scores here. Coming in tied for first place for this with a number one. We have Tough Bill, Doyle, Cobalt, and Fiskers. Coming in at number two, we have Milwaukee and Klein. And three is the Exceed Designs. Now for the weight, this one's pretty easy. We're just gonna put them on the scale. And then at the end of this, I'll show you guys how those weights stacked up against one another. And start with the cheapest one, which as you guys know, is the Milwaukee right at 100 grams for the Milwaukee. Tough built is 102 grams for the Doyle. We're looking at 112 grams. The Cobalt is 112 grams. The Fiskers is 159. Klein is 149 grams. For the Exceed Designs, this one here is 71 grams so we have some outliers here on the weight scale the exceed is by far the lightest knife at just 71 grams then coming in at a close second and third is the milwaukee at 100 the tough built at 102 then we jump straight up to the doyle and the cobalt tied at 112 the klein and then the fiskers is by far the heaviest knife it's actually over double that of the exceed designs tyrant now weight is what it is so it it depends on how much you guys are going to see that as a factor and for what you're using it for if it's for a very heavy workload or if it's to keep in your pocket obviously you're one it lighter if it's in your pocket but weight sometimes does come with comfort we'll have to see how those two things correlate now for the full size we're just going to measure the width and the height to see how basically how it would fit in your pocket we're going to test all of these and see where everything lies and then the end number here is going to be a multiplication of those two numbers so let's go ahead and see how they stack up no surprise here that exceed designs comes out number one by far uh, it is very, very small, especially compared to the other knives. Doyle comes in at a number two just in front of the Milwaukee. Then we go up to the Tough Built. The Klein is next, then the Cobalt. And then by far the biggest knife, again, is the Fiskers, which we could have guessed from the actual weight of the knife. For the opening tests, what we're going to do is we're going to test them by holding them perpendicular. Yeah, perpendicular. And press the button to see if it falls out. Okay, that's the first section of the test. And then the next is a handheld test because the truth is we could test the pressure of it, but the pressure of it doesn't always represent if it sucks or not. So the Milwaukee, this is the one we're gonna start off with and you guys saw it, but I'm gonna redo it just in case. Flies open, okay? If the button is not pressed, it doesn't move. But as soon as I press the button again, it does go. As far as flicking it open goes, flicks open super nicely. I have zero complaints about the Milwaukee with the opening. I'm gonna give this one a one. Tough built, pops down. If you let go of the button, it doesn't move as easily, it still moves. Now, one thing I will say with these knives that have two positions, cause there are a couple of them, I kinda hate it. Um, I, it. I don't always hate it, but I just feel if I let the button go too early, it gets stuck here. And typically I'm not looking to have this open to this level, okay? It's fine. It works great. It just like right there got stuck twice. Um, but I'm sure there's also a getting used to period with that. Tough build is an easy one. There is nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with this. No complaints here. Next up, we've got the Doyle. As soon as we press it, it opens. This, this feels nice. Uh, it's also aluminum. I kind of hate that there's a noise and it's pretty loud. It feels nice. It works well. I'm gonna go ahead and give the Doyle a one as well. Um, if you can get used to that noise, you're solid, you're set. You'll have no issues opening your knife. All right, now we've got the Cobalt here and we're pressing the button. I, I don't love the button and the uh, flick open action sucks. Uh, and I think, I, I don't know why that is. I was gonna say there's not enough weight but this one here is, uh, I mean, I'm already, I'm going to give this one a three um, because it not only will it not fall down when you have the button pressed, 
but it's pretty difficult. And if we hold this button down, um, there's just a little bit, a little bit of pressure. And once you start letting go, you really feel quite a bit of a pull here. Now this is a two position blade, um, but not a, not a big fan of of that so far. Fiskers, we press the button, it doesn't come down. It swings super smoothly though. Um, I am pretty like there's nothing wrong with this. When I press this button and I move this, it, there's no catch. There's no anything like I don't have to actually worry about whether or not this is gonna swing or not. Um, like with the cobalt, it wasn't wanting to move. This is going to be a very easy one for me. I know it doesn't swing down, but I think the tolerances are just tight. Uh, maybe there's a little bit of oil in there. We'll see what happens. Zero complaints about this. Um, the swing open on it is very easily a class one. Okay, on to the Klein. It does open up. Um, again, this is uh, this is one with a two a two stop thing, so you can have it at an angle or you can have it straight up and down. I am, uh, I'm not loving this so far. I, I actually can't get it to go. This is super rough. I don't know if I got a bad model uh, or what, but I will say this is anything but smooth. I would, when I have the button pressed, I still, I feel it catching. I feel little, um, little bumps in here. And if I don't have the button pressed, it is like hard to move. Like I'm putting a bit of pressure on there uh, so that's not good, but I'm shocked. I thought with the amount of weight in this top piece here, cause this is made of metal, unlike some of the other ones that it would swing a little bit easier. And like I said, I, I, maybe I got a bad model. Maybe it needs some breaking in, but that sucks. I'm gonna give this one a two on this, um, uh, because it's not as bad as the cobalt, but I'm not, not happy with it. That's for sure. And then the exceed designs here, the, the, the nice boy here. Uh, the opening and this is a, a very, very easy one. This thing opens like nobody's business. Uh, it's just a little flick. Now, if you look back here on the back, you can see this little lever here with just the smallest amount of pressure. And then it's a liner lock to close it. The rest of these are buttons to close. They are not the liner locks to close them. You press the button. Um, which liner locks are cool, buttons are cool, all of it's cool. The XC Designs is a very, very easy one for this, as it should be at a price point above many of the others. This is kind of what this is known for, is the flick open. It's a lot of fun to play with, um, that, that is for sure. So looking at our results for the opening here, this is a telling tale. And I'm going to be honest, this is probably the most important statistic to me at least, because it is something that is like, for one, I'll get so frustrated if my knife doesn't open when I want it to. We're looking at a lot of ones here. One is the only thing that's acceptable. If you don't have a one here, you're pretty much out for me. I'm going to I'm gonna be honest. Milwaukee Tough Built Doyle, Fiskers, Exceed, all get a one on this. They're great. They open well. They're smooth. There's no issues. Klein comes in with a two. I'm wondering if the model that I got is garbage if you guys have a have had a different experience with it let me know i'm very curious to see because i've seen a lot of people using this and i just i can't imagine it being like this for everybody and people still using it and then number three is the cobalt it is so stiff um i that's the one of the knives that was recommended somebody mentioned it to me on the platform at some point in time and i i, I was pretty disappointed with the opening and closing action on the cobalt for comfort, this one is pretty simple. We're gonna use the one, two, or three scale again. Basically, one means that it's exceptionally comfortable. Two means that it's it's okay. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's not something that I would consider very ergonomic. And three means that there are some sharp edges, and I'll point those out on the actual knives themselves, but there's something about the design that is flawed or that I don't particularly enjoy. You are starting with the Milwaukee, now there are no sharp edges on this. There's nothing crazy, um, especially up here towards the top. It's usually where you find some, some sharper edges or the clip, nothing crazy going on here. This one is gonna be a solid two, which is an acceptable score. Nothing wild here at all. This one is totally uh, gonna be a number two as well. 
nothing stands out about this as being uncomfortable. However, I wouldn't consider this to be ergonomic. Now, number three is the one where we're gonna actually drop the ball. This is the one that I was handling earlier and I found some sharp edges to it. Uh, this little plate back here is actually got some, some sharper edges to the edge here. Definitely some places where it's not as comfortable to grab. I'm gonna go ahead and give this one the first three for comfort. I told you guys about it earlier, but it can't st I can't stand this knife. Uh, cobalt is currently losing. One thing I have noticed about the cobalt is this lip in here tends to actually grab my fingers as I'm running by. Most of the other ones don't, but the edge on the inside of this is uncomfortable. Gonna get a number three for the score as far as comfort goes. Going on to Fiskars. This is an easy one. I think that it's a one for one because it's the only one that has rubber. This orange here is a rubber material. The rest of these are plastic and or metal. This is an all metal construction with the orange being a rubber, which gives you a lot more grip. And it's the only one with an actual round, like somebody, whoever designed this was legitimately thinking about the end user uh, because it's, it's very round, fits in my hand very nicely. This is going to be a one. It is by far the most comfortable knife to handle. Klein here, we got this one. This is the sixth one, and this one is not got anything wrong with it. It's got moderate comfortability. I'm gonna go ahead and give this one a solid two because there's nothing sharp on it. Nothing sticks out as being extremely unergonomic. However, definitely nothing fancy, nothing to, to make this stand out with an experience. And then finally, this Tyrant V3 here. Um, I'm gonna, this one's a hard one. It's a lot smaller than the others which I think size has a lot to do with how comfortable or uncomfortable a knife is in your hand. There are no sharp edges, so I wanna give it a two there, but it is a lot smaller. It would be much, much harder to handle, you know, doing a lot of heavy, heavy cutting. Um, however, there are no flaws with this design, so I'm gonna have to give this a two based solely on the fact that it was designed well with no sort of issues, no sharp parts, nothing to snag your fingers or hands or pockets or anything like that on. So as far as comfortability, I'm gonna give this one a two, even with its size. So taking a look at our results here, Fiskars is the only one that finished with a one. I do believe that this is so much further ahead than these other knives when it comes to ergonomics. They were really, really thinking about it when they made this knife, the end user in mind. Obviously, a four people came in with a number two here. We have Milwaukee, Tough Built, Klein, and Exceed. They are very acceptable, very, they, they work, all right? And then three, the Doyle and the Cobalt both had some issues, some sharp issues, which is not something that you wanna see, definitely not something you want on your utility knife. And then as far as clips go, there's a couple things that matter to me personally that might not matter to you. This here is my pouch. And if you can see this here, this is where a pair of old scissors goes, but I don't use that for scissors. I use that to carry my knife, which I will reveal at the end here. We're gonna go through and, and cover the size of the clips, the style of the clips, um, and, and kind of go over what I think about them. Again, one, two, or three, why I think that. Start with the Milwaukee. It's got the classic wire clip here. These are great. They've been great for a long time and fresh out of the box. They don't love to go on there. Um, however, I, if you're like me, typically I end up bending my clips out quite a bit anyway. Um, and then they work their way into whatever I want them to a lot smoother than that. It's pretty tight on a pocket. It's fine. It's not a big deal. It's going to get a one. It works perfectly fine. It's going to get a one clips. They either are okay or they're not. It's a one or a two. You either suck where you're great. Tough build, I actually like Tough Built's clips a lot because as you can see, there's a huge lip there and then it comes down. But if we, right out of the package, super easy, no issues at all, but it's also tight on your pockets. It just has a huge lip. I really, really like these Tough Built clips. I've had quite a few of their knives and stuff like that, and they're great. Going on to the third, to Doyle. This is a tricky one. Um, this There's quite a bit of this here. It is the wire style, and it's really large. Um, it fits in there just nicely. I didn't actually think I was going to like this so much. I thought it was going to be a little bit more difficult with the size, but 
turns out especially for my application it's great in a pocket it's easy and the size is not a negative thing i did not think i was going to like that one cobalt they have a wire clip here and if we look over here at the cobalt it's tight as well but it's actually not as tight as the milwaukee um i would definitely have to bend that out that is quite tight now the fiskers is definitely going to be an iffy one here with this clip it is pretty tight um and if originally there's no grip on there as you can see it kind of hides underneath all of these clips can be bent out if that's the issue um and i will tell you at the end how i feel about this one uh even with the clip currently being in the state that it's in um not great to start off with really great ergonomics to hide that however when it comes to actually being able to use it quickly pulling it off uh, or even in, in my pocket it doesn't even really want to grab super easily so not something you want to be fighting then we have the klein this one's got a pretty large uh clip here so it goes on nicely no issues zero issues there and with the pocket same thing super easy no complaints and of course the exceed designs this is going to be for a, a lot smaller um more for a pocket style a little bit of trouble there and that one's pretty low profile so that is going to have a little bit of a harder time snagging one thing to mention with two of these knives and that's the tough built and the exceed designs these are the only two with the clips at the bottom of the knife now that's ideal if you're carrying in your pocket the other ones have them up top none of these have the ability to actually change that um, from the bo bottom to the top or the left to the right but this one here the tough build in the exceed designs do have the bottom uh, a, the clip on the bottom which makes it much much easier to carry so that is going to be a bonus for them for the edc utility knives now we're going to take a look at our average scores okay this is for blade change comfort and the opening this tells the story okay obviously the lower the number the better fiskers is gotta be my number one for workhorse knives if you guys are looking to do some damage fiskers is the one for you that is what i had picked before i did all the numbers but starting off with fiskers it blows all these other utility knives out of the water when it comes to utility and being able to actually put some force in it and like using it every single day it is a lot heavier so it's actually not going to make the edc utility knife it's a lot larger but i think that size and that weight actually adds to the comfortability the usability and the ergonomics of that knife and i think it's one of the things that actually makes it pretty great to use heavily every single day then in the number two spot i have milwaukee and then in number three i have the tough built and honestly there's another tough built knife that i like better than this it's the pry bar one but i wanted to keep it as close to being able to actually represent this style of knife the best now the edc one this is a no-brainer obviously the exceed designs wins when it comes to the edc this knife is obviously much much more expensive than the other knives here and it's meant for an edc knife it's much cooler uh, when it comes to carrying this in your pocket it's a lot smaller it's a lot lighter it's titanium it's it's what you would consider like to be more of a pocket knife style of knife with the utility blade it is by far my favorite utility knife to carry in my pocket when i'm not working i'm not planning on doing a bunch of heavy stuff but i want a knife in my pocket if you're looking to not spend a bunch of money that's not the one for you there are two other options on this list coming in at number two i have the tough build with the size with everything else uh it, it's it's small it's light it's compact it's a great knife i it scored really really well on the other things it opens well there's nothing wrong with it at all and then coming in at number three the milwaukee it's also again one of the smaller options one of the lighter options that is just perfect for edc if, if you're carrying it in your pocket and they do have another version of this with the screwdriver on it so if you want a screwdriver on there you want to add multiple tools that is a possibility i know it's got a bottle opener as well but i'm a big fan of the milwaukee fastbacks as far as my everyday carry goes for work, I always have the Fiskars utility knife. I got a new one for this test, so everything was fair, but I have like four or five of these things laying around the house everywhere, as well as always, always, always have one on my pouch. 
There was a point in time where I also had one in my backpack. If you guys have seen the channel, you, you knew this was coming, which is one of the reasons why the clip wasn't a big deal to me because I actually, I have this one and I have it pried out. It doesn't get in the way. Once you pry that clip out a little bit, it's perfect for anything that you needed to, especially for my pouch. It works wonderfully. And for my EDC, I do usually carry the Exceed designs because it's so, it's just, ugh. They did a beautiful job with this knife. And if you're like me and you enjoy little things like that, little trinkets, little man toys, if you will, then that is definitely something you want to think about picking up. Now, the one that surprised me the most is definitely, it's definitely this Klein. Uh, I am not very happy with the performance of the Klein. It's not, it didn't open well. There's not anything great and the action on it was terrible. Um, I don't find it, you know, there's nothing special about it. it. It goes in the middle of a lot of them, but having issues opening is one of the biggest things for me that I just, I can't stand. And I don't want anything to do with a knife that won't open correctly or easily. Um, so that's definitely my biggest gripe and I, I, I'm mind blown. I really do think there's a lot of fanboys out there, unless I've gotten a bad model. There's just a lot of fanboys fanboying over this utility knife because they finally came out with one. I do love a lot of their stuff. This utility knife is not one of them. Let me know if I'm wrong in the comments. I'm open to it. I might've got a bad model. It might need some time to break in, but I don't think it should. And finally, the knife that surprised me in a good way was this Milwaukee Fastback. I do have the Hawkbill Fastback, and I also have the regular bladed Fastback, but I've never actually had their utility knives. I do like Milwaukee. Those are the power tools that I carry. I've just never gotten one of these. I didn't understand that they were so cheap. They kind of blew my mind, but I didn't expect it to do so well and to be so light. I guess I should have known because everybody loves them and they love them for a reason, but everybody loves the Kleins too. And I can't comprehend why now. I'm very confused about it. You guys, uh, dirty dogs. Coming up here soon, we are gonna test out wire strippers and actually put them to the test, see what kind of force it actually takes to cut with them. So subscribe to see more of that. If you guys wanna see what I carry every single day, head up to this video. Remember you guys, it's all for his glory and I will see you guys on the next one.